Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make uh, probably this is the final post that I'll make for uh, this course for this summer. And I uh, want to thank you all for the hard work you've done. And we'll just keep uh, working away on trying to do a good job in finishing strong here. But uh, one of the things I wanted to point out in these last two discussion boards is uh, first one, fraudulent transfers. That's 11 U.S.C. 548. Uh, there are uh, situations that I've seen over the years where there has been uh, fraudulent transfers. A lot of times when I was involved on behalf of creditors. Uh, this is where um, someone, let's say they have a nice boat that's paid for uh, and then the bottom falls out of business, they uh, either lose their job, get laid off for a while. Uh, and so uh, let's say they just put that boat over into their brother's name uh, and there's no consideration, which is to say the brother doesn't pay him any money. Well, the important thing about the fraudulent transfer in 11 U.S.C. 548 is that the trustee can uh, pierce that transfer and set it aside and take it back to what it was before if they recognize that it was in fact a fraudulent transfer. Probably the way that would have to happen is that they would have to investigate uh, you know, if you really got serious about it, you have to look at their bank accounts. Was there a payment? Was there a deposit? You know, what could they trace to where in terms of their banks? The other thing is that the, um, you know, one of the two of them might tell the truth. The brother might say, well, I don't want to get in hot water. Uh, and yeah, he just signed that boat over me and said, could I take it over for a while? And uh, he would come back to pick it up after uh, you know, the next six months or something. So if you could get the truth out of somebody, that's important. Or you could look at bank records. So any kind of a fraudulent transfer, cars, motorcycle, I mean, there's a lot of things like that. And that, that happens in uh, different situations. So the point of it is the trustee can penetrate that transaction, set it aside, capture the asset, sell the asset, take the money and pay it out to all the creditors. Now, like I told you before, the important thing for the trustee and why the trustee would even bother is that they would uh, get a percentage of the return. Now, some of the things that some of these really aggressive trustees have gotten themselves into trouble because they tried to, uh, let's say, capture a gas station and some kind of deal like that where something was either fraudulent or it was an executory contract and they wanted to set it aside because there wasn't enough uh, um, consideration or again money, we talk about consideration, we mean money, uh, paid for this gas station. Well, uh, there's a case out of Wisconsin where a trustee was being really aggressive and he took over this gas station, set aside the transfer grabbed a hold of it, well, because he felt like he sold it too cheap. Well, when he got into it, there were leaky fuel tanks in on that property. And so what ends up happening, the EPA steps in and sues the trustee and says the trustee has to pay personally the cost of the cleanup of this property. So it was really bad because we had two agencies of the government uh, vying with each other. You got a trustee in federal bankruptcy court uh, going against a uh, agency of the government, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, in federal court. So that was really bad. It didn't play out too well for the trustee. So what has happened is some of these guys have gotten rather gun shy and it can apply to either of these situations. So that's kind of why I combined these two together and I'm going to show the same uh, video on both websites just so you, you'll know. Uh, and so when we shift to the executory contracts, it'll be some of the same information, it'll also be some new information. But um, so you can see where, uh, you know, that can be in the interest of the bankruptcy court to set aside that fraudulent transfer. But if it was a situation where there, let's say there were termites in this house or 
this environmental protection thing with the leaky tanks uh, costs thousands of dollars to clean that up. Well, it may not be worth very much, and the trustee might overestimate the value and say that it was fraudulent when in fact it was a liability that the guy was trying to get rid of in order to get uh, leaner as far as his operation and avoid you know losing money on that particular project. Uh, the only thing about that is the EPA can go back again on the debtor so both the debtor, the buyer, and the trustee can all be hit uh, with these EPA liens because of uh, having to fix that problem with the leaky tanks. So, you know, it's really complicated in this modern world because you get all these different laws that are pushing against each other. But in the simple scenario that I gave you on the fraudulent transfer, that's what you see most of the time where someone is trying to move their assets. And think about things that are really mobile like jewelry and stuff like that. I am sure that people uh, loan furniture or uh, jewelry or different things to different people to try to avoid losing everything in the bankruptcy. So that's one consideration. Keep in mind that you don't want to be any part of that. You don't want to know anything about it. Uh, and you, whatever you do, you don't want to get sideways with the federal government. So, uh, you know, you hear somebody saying, well, what if I give it to my brother or whatever? Get as far away from that as you can. You don't even want to be handling that case. Well, moving on then, we talked about this. Let's talk about the executory contracts. Executory contract, really what we mean by executory contract is a, a written contract. In other words, where there's express terms and, for example, uh, let's say there's an interest payment on a promissory note. Let's say it's 10%. Okay, and now today, uh, percentage on these loans, let's say it's like 4, 5, 6% on like a car loan. And the guy needs this car in order to be able to get back and forth to work in order to make the payments to his other creditors in a uh, wage earner plan or chapter 13. Well, the trustee can step in in a case like that and demand that the bank lower that interest rate and so they can actually modify executory contracts uh, or they can cancel them. So depending on what's in the best interest of um, the um, estate of the debtor, not that they're doing anybody any favors or anything, they're really what they're trying to do is just find money wherever they can in order to pay the bills. And if the bank is getting an unfair advantage because they're charging these people too much money for interest, then because it's an executory contract, that can be modified by the trustee in order to fit. Uh, and if there still is a contention and so forth, you can go to the bankruptcy court uh, and ask for relief uh, from the executory contract, either to modify or to cancel that contract. Another good example had a client that had one of those great big uh, fancy conversion vans uh, and he was driving that to work and then they were driving it on trips and stuff like that. Well, they didn't have any money to go on vacation or trips, so he just needed something dependable that he'd get back and forth to work. Uh, and so, you know, he wanted out of that contract uh, and yet he wanted to go out and buy a different car. Well, trustee ended up approving that in order to get rid of that car and go to a, a cheaper car uh, as not being a fraudulent type of a deal because it was more beneficial to the debtor's estate to have a cheaper car. So you can see where both of these things can come in. They can actually bump against each other or they can be a little bit of this or you might first think it's this when it's really just this. So you have to be really careful and that's kind of why I want to talk about both these at the same time. Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of executory contracts. Uh, license agreement uh, can be very con uh, common. Uh, license agreement might be you've gotten a license from the Pacers for your company to print t-shirts that have a Pacers logo on it. Every time you have to print one of those t-shirts, let's say you have to give the Pacers a nickel. Okay, well the trustee can take over that contract and say we can't afford to do this we're going to lose this business 
if we can't lower your rate uh, to four cents, not five cents. And if you don't want it at uh, four cents, then we're just going to have to cancel the whole thing, scrap the whole company. So that's an example of how they can modify things. Uh, and, you know, they can assume it as is, they can modify it, or they can reject it. If they reject it, basically, it's the same thing as canceling it. Okay? So this is really up to the court. Uh, trustee can be involved. Let's say that you've got a company uh, and it's operating in a space. You've got a lease, which is down here as one of the other uh, ones that you've got. Uh, basically, you've got a long-term lease on a property, and it's costing you a thousand a month to make these T-shirts. I don't know why I came up with T-shirts, but licensing is a big part of making these T-shirts. So, so you get this thousand-dollar a month property. Well, the the actual the trustee can say, "Look, I found you a place for five hundred dollars. I can save you fifty percent per month and make this uh, uh, contract work." Uh, so your company can survive, or perhaps the attorney for the debtor comes up th with this and convinces the trustee. What if we move to a cheaper place, like an old warehouse or something? Yeah, it's not as pretty, but it's functional, and we can move all this equipment in there and keep making these T-shirts, and suddenly we're profitable by dropping that rent from 1000 to 500 Or you can go back to the landlord and say, look, we have got to modify this contract to lower the rent from a thousand, or we go to this other place for five hundred. We'd rather pay you the five hundred, so we don't have all the moving expenses. So maybe they'll negotiate. And say, well, I, I just can't let this property go for five hundred, but I'll take six hundred. So you see what goes on. It's a negotiation, and so it gives the trustee and the debtor a little bit of power to try to negotiate themselves into a better financial situation. Large corporations like General Motors, Chrysler, I'm sure they did this uh, when they got involved in having to dump their debts. Same way with Kmart and some of these other ones. Uh, they had to, you know, you take something, it's better than nothing. If you need a supplier, you got that license agreement for a supplier, uh, you know, they're going to have to accept less money for the inventory. Uh, also, royalty uh, contracts do not, are not applicable to uh, these executory contracts. They do not. Uh, basically, uh, what it is, one side has fulfilled their duties, like a musician uh, records a song, they get paid uh, so many cents for every record. Let's say the record company has to go bankrupt. Well, they're just, they're obligated because they're locked in on that and you can't change uh, those terms because it requires performance which you get over into the equity side of contracts and uh, not just the legal side. Uh, also franchise agreements, yes franchise agreements can be modified uh, and it is very common. So let's say that someone's got a franchise agreement uh, for a Chick-fil-A, let's say, uh, which I don't know why I picked that. but. Uh, and you've got to pay so much money to Chick-fil-A, but uh, that's based on an old interest rate. Uh, and so now that the interest rates are lower, the trustee might need to modify that contract uh, to pay lower payments on that franchise agreement. So here again, that can be the uh, same type issue as with the uh, license agreements. Uh, or it can go the other way. Chick-fil-A goes bankrupt and uh, basically they can try to hold people to uh, the payment scheme in order to pay Chick-fil-A's debts. So it's, um, you know, it can go either way. Unexpired lease, like I said, modifiable, uh, like in a situation I mentioned where it's the cost uh, and it, the whole, you know, the budget doesn't work, paying a thousand a month in rent. Uh, same way with a car. You got a certain car uh, that you got in order to drive to work. Uh, but you want to work because you need the money to pay your chapter 13 uh, But you can't afford that car you got to get a cheaper car or they've got to lower the payment on that lease uh, And uh, pending contracts for sale of real, real estate no because the terms were set on that if you're filing bankruptcy on uh, pending contract on real estate not an executory contract and basically, you're just going to have to walk away 
from your plans and dreams uh, to get into that new property. Installment contracts, a lot of the times uh, you got a sweeper and you got an installment contract on that. And maybe they're charging you 20% uh, for that loan for that, for that sweeper. Well, those are outrageous. And they may say, look, you got to take that cram down rate of like 5 6%, uh, and, or we'll just give you the sweeper back and go out and buy another one. So age old story, um, you know, every case is a little bit different, uh, but it does give the trustee a lot of flexibility to do whatever needs to be done in order to make the um, balance sheet work so these people can make it in the future because some of the deals they got themselves in were bad deals. Maybe they were good deals at the time, like in the 90s, when it was very common to pay 12% for a car loan or whatever. But now that same loan's going for 3 4 5%. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you need to get a, bit, uh, a different a rewrite of the loan in order to be able to survive. So these are just some of the common situations. Uh, let me know if you have questions, robdaywall at me.com. Otherwise, uh, you know, give this all a look. And like I say, I'm going to actually put this up twice uh, because it covers both discussion board um, areas. So, hey, good luck on the things that are coming up in the future. Try to finish strong, like I said. Let me know if I can help you. Uh, this is Rob Daywalt signing off. Thanks a lot.